So this time let's display some stats like time and distance traveled. For example, um, yes, the thing you might want to record in game. So in your widgets folder, let's create a new widget called in game and let's go widget and we'll open up and this widget will display some stats. And to do so, we'll use some text boxes. So it's always nice to have these in the top corner. We can anchor these to the top corner as well. Um, and let's call this one time. So I should give it a slightly bigger and make it black. And let's have another text next to it. And we'll, we'll do two more. Let's do distance and another distance. Cool, so we'll call you distance. Again, set it to black. I think I use size 32. Uh, it might be nice to sort of get these on the same, so the end at the same point, but I'm not gonna worry too much about the aesthetics for this right now. 32, 32. Put you in place there, you in place there. And what we're going to need to do is something called text binding. So for this text block, um, you know, this will be distance traveled, you know, like 30 M. Um, so what we'll do is click on create binding. And in here is where it's going to allow us to set our value. So let's create a new variable. Um, and that's going to be of type float, which we will call distance. And change it to type float. Because that's what we're going to measure our distance in. And we're going to do the same. Sorry, if I click on my designer for this one which might be like, I don't know, um, 33, why not? And let's create a new binding for this. And this will probably be well, a new one called time. And essentially, what we're going to want to do is drag off this, get, and put into there. Um, and we'll probably tweak these and improve them as we're going, um, but for now, for sake of test, let's just wire them up, and we're gonna want our level blueprint. So let's open our level blueprint. All right, we've already got an event begin play where we create this thing. Um, let's also, after this, that is our intro, let's say after our intro is finished, we'll create our in-game widget. And there we go, now we've got our in-game widget, but we're going to need to set it. And essentially the way we're gonna set it is to pass information across. Now, let's do this on a function. So let's create a new function called time. And time is basically going to have a variable. We'll actually make it an int time s for seconds and let's set it to integer and let's get time and we'll get it and we'll increment it by plus one so there we go we got time and that is essentially going to speak to our widget so let's actually, once we've got reference to this, let's promote this to variable. And we'll call this um, IGW for in-game widget. Did I get the right one? I did not get the right one. It's fine, hopefully it should just allow me to do that. No, it will not. Damn you. Let's do it again, because I think I got the right one. Promote to variable, in-game W. Now we could do this on event take and it'd probably be easier to set up. Um, 
I'm just going to in-game W2 because I need to take this one. Like I said, we could probably do this on um, tick, but it'll be a lot more complicated. And now once we've got that, um, we're going to set time. We should have made time an int, but I'm sure it'll just convert it. Um, yeah, and then we just need to fire that off. So we'll need a timer by function. So oh, set timer by function name. And that function name is time. It's just time. It says here, time. Um, and every one second, we will loop that. Yay. And let's test that that works. All right, we have... Oh, we need to remove the five borders. But you can see we have time. Um, sorry, in my intro, I need to disconnect you. Sorry, on my intro, I had black bars. And I've got to disconnect it. Um, so back to ah blueprints. Let's create ourselves um, another function. In fact, instead of a function this time, I'll just show you how to do it as a, a timer, and then you can choose if you want to do it on update or in a function, because it's essentially both work the exact same way. But what we'll do is, let's get distance. So let's get a target point, and put it right under a fella's feet like this. Let's consider that our start point, and let's get reference to it. Create reference. Let's also get a character create reference um, and drag off this and say get distance to and then that's going to return as a value of which essentially it's we are going to want to you know with reference to our IGW so get reference to you and we're going to um, set, was it distance? We did call it distance. And like I said, you could do this on a function, which would probably be better computationally, um, but we're just going to do this on a tick, just to show you the other way of doing it, but it would be the exact same way of creating a function. And passing, you might need to pass the information on, but yeah, I'm sure that'd be fine. Um, so we're going to on tick, update you, Go to our event graph, make sure that's wired up. It is. And let's test it out. Ooh, so it's got a default distance of 98. Sure. Um, the number's a bit unwieldy as well at the moment, so let's just try and fix that. Huh. Why is that not? Why is that giving us an error? You know what? We don't even need you. We can just get reference to you right from here, like that. Um, so actually, let's get our distance. And I'm just going to, let's, let's truncate it first of all. Um, that'll get rid of making it an integer, get rid of the flow point numbers. And then let's divide that by, I don't know, 10? 20, a high number, either way. Now let's get you there. See if it works. Okay, that seems like much better numbers. Might even go lower. You know what? I'll come back to you in a sec. Let's also try and, can we append you? No, we cannot. Let's get a, a string append. And in here, let's add M for like meters. And we can do a, in fact, we can just bypass you for a second. 
get you into there, you into there. Right, let's see if that works. Okay, so you can see it's adding M as well to the end, so it looks like we're traveling in meters. I'm gonna have to drop that number significantly. Um, also again, an error. Let's have a look on what, let's actually fix this now. On set distance, I don't understand why that would give us an error. Access none on third person example map. What is it accessing none on? Um, basically, it's trying to speak to this and set it, but it can't do that because um, that doesn't actually get created for five full seconds. So, what we'd need to do is just, let's just put this on a quick um, check. So we'll just do it on a branch and we'll create a condition here called post five, which by default will be set to false. And then after our five seconds have done, and this has been created, let's set you to true. And that should get rid of the error. And no error, way! So there you go, that's how to create a couple of in-game texts. And this is how to um, set it all up. And that's it. What I might do is quickly put this on a function, just like I say, you're always told not to use event ticks because event ticks are much more computationally heavy. So let's create a new function called dist. And let's save ourselves some time and copy and paste you. Put that in here like that. And what we're doing with this one? Oh, we're doing this. So let's get you, put you, you there like that. And go to our event graph. Stop you doing there don't actually need you anymore, we don't need you anymore, we don't need you anymore. Set you to dist. Fire this off a lot more frequently. Um, probably at some point set up a check saying only do if player is alive, but No, but that breaks. Why does that break? Because we're setting it to time. That's stupid of us. We want to set this to distance. This is why you should just copy and paste everything. Awesome, there we go. We've set this up as a, a function, which means it's gonna be much better on us in the handling. There we go.